Hi everyone, Chris and Julie here from the Photopole Electric Vehicle Expedition. We have finished phase one of the expedition, which is driving from the magnetic North Pole, high up in Arctic Ocean, down to where we are now, which is Vancouver. We are, we are in Vancouver, and as you can see in the backdrop there, the city of Vancouver. And we are here to basically answer some questions from the kids, haven't we? We've got some questions from Green Bray Primary School, back in our hometown of Aberdeen. Yes. Yes, and we want to thank teacher Mr. Munro for encouraging his students to um, draw and design these cards and um, submit so these cool. questions to so us. Cool. So we've been enjoying reading and going through all your questions. Unfortunately, we can't get through all of them because there's so many, but uh, we'll, we'll get through as many as we can. Yeah. So, um, yeah, do you want to start? Do you want to start? Yes, and it's going to be got this one here, and I like this one because it's got the, the car, it's got the drone, it's got everything we kind of. Uh, all the modifications put on the car, and it's also got the logo in the, in the middle, and it's from Theo. And Theo says, is your car going to run out of electricity when you are not going to be in the North Pole? Um, the answer to that, Theo, is there is every chance we might run out of electricity. Um, when we're driving in the Americas, we have access to electric vehicle chargers. So we can charge the car and keep moving, but there are some points where we don't have access to those chargers and we have to rely on the kindness of strangers, don't we? Yes. To plug our car into yes. a, just a domestic plug socket like you have at home for your kettle, etc. Um, so yeah, there may be times when we might run out of electricity, who knows? Yes, but so far in those instances, we have been powered by the kindness of people. So yeah. um, that's been good. So thanks for that, Theo. I've got um, a really nice design here. Good luck with your journey. And this is from Kaylee, and it says, "From Kaylee, where will you sleep?" Um, so, in we've got a combination of places where we've been sleeping. Mm. So, we've been tenting up in the Arctic. We've been sleeping in the car, and we'll also be getting a rooftop tent on top of our car. So, we'll be sleeping there in campsites as well. And then there will be hotels, motels occasionally as well. So, it's a mixture of different places where we'll sleep. Yeah. So, um, thanks for that, Kaylee. And I have the next one saying, good luck. And this one is from Logan. And Logan asked, what happens if you go on ice and how do you know where it's safe to drive? That's a great question, Logan. And essentially, we've been working with specialists for quite a number of years now, and they've been mapping the sea ice up in the Arctic Ocean to see whether it's good or bad or too thick or too, too thin. Um, and we actually had a, a ice thickness measuring device that we took with us that was towed behind one of the cars and what it does is sends a signal down into the ice and it tells us how thick it is doesn't it yes so in the arctic ocean we were about two meters to two and a half meters thick so we were we were pretty safe okay um next one is i love this card <laughs> i love it because it says julie is an ice cube and um, you were an ice cube I at times i was an ice cube at times so you were spot on there and this card is from is it Ayla, I I L S E O, Ayla. Ayla. Ayla, and um, it says hello, Chris and Julie. I hope you do not freeze today. <laughs> Good luck on your journey. Um, are you times. taking any charging leads for the cars? <laughs> Interesting question. Um, we have charging leads. We have plenty of them. Um, we've got lots of different plugs for different situations. Um, there's so many different types of um, charging speeds and charging types. So to answer your question, yes, we do have an array of different charging plugs with us and they're all with us in the car and that allows us to uh, power away as we go down south. Yes, cool. Thank you, Killian. Like I said, I love, love all your uh, individual designs there. <laughs> made it really made me smile. And this one, I've got one here from Mia. So Mia has asked us, how do you compromise between taking what, taking what you need with you and traveling light I think I'm the wrong person answering this question, Mia. Um, I think Julie should be answering this one, but yeah. <laughs> another great question um, because it is very difficult. We are on, we are on the, the road for 10 months. Yeah. So imagine going on holiday for 10 months. Yeah. So you've got to take just enough what you need with you because we can't take too much um, or one of us can't take too much. Well, the problem is we are um, crossing through so many different um, terrains in terms of weather weather terrain so sometimes it's really cold yeah. like extremely cold and sometimes really hot so you've got clothing for all matter of yes. like temperature so we're we've, our car at the moment is rammed in the back it's no space um, but we will need to 
Yeah. I mean, <laughs> downsizing. In short, we are, it's are very difficult. <laughs> it's very yeah. difficult to pack. This is for that. And we're still working through yeah, it, aren't we? We are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I have one from this really nice design here. And this is from, if I can open it up. This is from Ronnie. And it says, question is, how long do you think it will take? Good question, Ronnie. So we predict, well, 10 months in short is the answer. Um, so we started up in the Mag North on the 29th of March. Yep. And we hope to be in a, reaching the geographical South Pole around the end of December. Yep. So all in all, we are predicting about 10 months in total for our trip. Yes. Thanks. And now I have a question here from Jake, another cool design. Mm -hmm. And my question is, what happens if the car gets stuck in the ice and the snow? So another good question there, Jake, and it did happen to us. Um, there was a number of times we did get stuck in the snow um, because the snow sometimes was very, very thick um, or very, very deep. And we had a support team with us. When you do any expedition, um, anybody that goes on the expedition, you, it's always the right thing to do is to take a support team with you so you all stay safe. So they would pull us, they had used their vehicle to pull us out of that thick bit of snow and then we'd carry on driving on our way. So, Good. yeah, we did get stuck a couple of times. Okay, next up we have this, <laughs> again, I really like this design, lots of food, which is my favorite pastime. <laughs> and this is from Jessica, and Jessica asks us, what food will you take? So, in the Arctic, um, what food, we predominantly lived off expedition food, didn't we? Yeah. Which was freeze-dried food. Um, and what you would do is you would have boil hot water and you would pour the hot water into the food and give, leave it about 10 minutes, 20 minutes and it would rehydrate and you would eat that. Yeah. Um, other than because if we took normal foods, it would just freeze. So predominantly we did eat expedition foods, but we did have other snacks with us. Rowies was one. Yeah. Tunnock's but tea cakes. Butteries, tunnock's tea cakes. And caramel wafers, just to get a bit of feel a bit of Scottish. And we had some iron <laughs> brew as well, didn't we? And we did. So um, little treats to keep us motivated and happy. So, um, but if you go into your local camping store uh, in Aberdeen, and if you look, you'll see the packets of food hanging up in the, uh, the camping store that we took with us. Yeah, so thanks for that. Now, okay. next question. Um, I've got this one from Ada, and this is, how do you stay warm? Right, so Ada, basically for us to stay warm, if you think back home in Aberdeen, you have your nice big warm jacket and your jumpers to keep you warm in Aberdeen when it's pretty cold. We have exactly the same thing, but ours are made specially for the polar regions, for, for the Arctic and Antarctica. So they're just a lot thicker, a lot warmer. And we have woolly clothes that go and we wear underneath um, as like a t-shirt. Then we have a jumper and then we have a big thick jacket. So, and big woolly hats. So same as what you wear, but just a lot more, um, a lot more robust for those areas. Yeah. Yeah, and big mittens and boots and everything. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was still cold despite <laughs> all those ex all those layers. I felt like I could never get warm in the Arctic. Um, I have this um, next question from Fraser, and it says to Chris and Julie, are you looking forward to seeing the wildlife on your journey? That's a good question, Fraser. And uh, we did see wildlife. Yes. I think the highlight of our trip was we saw a polar bear in the wild and that was truly magical yeah. and very, very special moment and um, we just watched the polar bear through binoculars and took a moment just to absorb that, so amazing moment. Um, polar bear, we also saw caribou in the wild and we saw an arctic hare in the wild, we also saw some arctic foxes, some yeah. arctic birds and it was just, yeah, full of wildlife when we are up there, so um, thanks for your question. I love the wildlife. Wonder, I just loved seeing that ball. Yeah. It was amazing. And right, I have this question from Emma. So this is like to do with the smells and <laughs> smells on the journey. Um, this is how do you keep your clothes clean? Now, in the Arctic um, and in, the, in Antarctica, um, obviously, Emma, we don't have the option to wash clothes because there is nowhere to wash the clothes. So we only take in what we need um, for those regions. So we tend, we have plenty of base layers and underwear. So base layers are something you wear over the top of your underwear before you put a jumper on or a jacket on. And so we have plenty of layer versions of that so we can change them regularly. Um, but actually, you don't clean yourself or your clothes really until you come out of the Arctic because uh, on Antarctica. So 
a cup for you go for a couple of weeks without showering or washing clothes, unfortunately. Yeah, well, you, maybe wipes, little yeah. wipes if uh, you really needed to, but um, generally everyone just, um, just, uh, funnily enough, nobody really smelled. You know, it's cold, isn't it, out there? So you didn't really sweat that much, so it wasn't too cold. Well, we just want to tell you, we didn't want to tell you. <laughs> 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 or nose clips. Um, okay, and then finally, we've got this question from Keeley. It's a beautiful design from Keeley there, thank you. How are you feeling just now, and how do you think you will feel at the end? Oh, I love that question. That is a good question. Um, I am relieved just now that we have completed phase one. Um, it was difficult. It was yeah. very, very difficult, very challenging. And it's a relief that we're back on safe land. We're not on any frozen ice or um, melting ice. Because yeah. um, there was um, lots of dangers where we were. Yeah. Um, last last year, um, a car that did the same uh, route actually went through the ice and yeah. had to be rescued. So, so it just shows you just how dangerous it can be up there. It's, so the it's fact, sunk all the way down to the bottom. So the fact we're in Vancouver, back on safe land, very, very happy. And um, how will I feel at the end? Oh, really, oh, I just can't. I can't describe how I will feel. I think. Yeah, I just. Yeah. It will just be absolutely incredible, incredible, because yeah. it's been so tough. I think. Um, you know, the whole journey's been so tough. Yeah. It's going to be tough till we get there. So, very, very happy, obviously. And yeah. Very, very happy, but also a bit mixed. I think for me, because when we finish we still need to get out of Antarctica, so we still need to drive our way back out of Antarctica, and then we also need to get back home. Yeah, so, um, to the UK, I think we're very, very far away. I we? think when we get back to the UK, or get back home to Aberdeen, I think that's when we'll be able to relax and actually take on board what we've hopefully just achieved. Yeah, big celebrations, and, yeah. big, big celebrations. And that's when the happiness will start, I think. Yeah, so um, who knows, but, uh, but yeah, I think massive sigh of relief and just elation and just, yeah, you're just like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for all your good luck wishes. Um, they truly mean a lot to us. Yes. We've loved reading and going through all your designs and cards and I'm fortunate and sorry we couldn't get through all the all questions. All the questions, yes. just so many. But um, we will take these with us on our journey and we'll look at them now and again. And yeah, just thank you to you all. P5, Greenbury Primary School and thank you Mr yeah. Munro as well. If we ever, if we ever feeling a little bit down, or if we ever feeling that we need a little bit of, a little bit of a perk up, we know we've got we'll read you your with cards. Us. Thank you so much, Thank guys. Thank you. Bye Take bye. Care.